And it's on. It's on, yeah. And we're recording? Oh, yeah, we're recording. Oh, fine. As per usual. <laughs> yeah. Like this, the, the sneaky the start. The sneaky start. We're going to have to keep Indeed. an eye on these because I haven't charged them. You haven't charged them? No, so they might ah. go off, at which point the podcast will end. Well, I mean, we're professionals. Yeah, this is the lowest effort. The yeah, lowest effort we've ever put into a podcast yet. podcast yet. Yeah. We've had a week off. Sabbatical. We had sabbatical, yeah. Enforced sabbatical. Yeah, there was a four-day weekend. There was. We badly planned it. We badly approached it. Yeah, um, some would say, yeah, we got our tactics mixed up. Got excited. Know. Definitely got excited. There's a limited amount of four-day weekends I can endure. And yeah. I'm getting really close to the... Yeah, four days. Like, yeah. It's excessive. Yeah. You know? So when people say, like, uh, we should do the four-day work week, I, I agree with them, like, a three-day weekend's good. But if someone said, what about a three-day work week, I'd say stop. Calm yeah, I'd down. say stop, yeah, That's too. a bit too much. No, nah, people need to be fucking doing a bit of work. Yeah. Like, if I have four I mean? days where I can do whatever I want, mm. Mm. you know. No, I'd be delighted with four-day working week. Yeah. And three-day weekend. I mean, come on. Like, we've got chat GBT. We've got AI. Get your fingers out, boss, and make it happen. Yeah, it'll happen eventually. You know what I'm saying? You know? We need these boys, the tech boys, to make it so that we can work. Earn the same money. Yeah. In fact, maybe even a bit more money. Mm-hmm. But we still have, we have to have a three-day weekend. Someone, uh... Frolic. More frolicking time. <laughs> Fro- frolic I want more time more, to yeah. frolic. I don't frolic enough. No? Nah, it's been ages since I've frolicked in a field. Mm. Mm. We should take the train out, um out of town one day and find a nice field to frolic in we should i don't know if, i don't like in england and ireland you're legally allowed to frolic in any field you choose as long as you stay near the footpath i think it's a, it's a law that's been on the books since yeah the time of king henry the eighth you know frolicking is allowed is permitted within yeah. fields of well, well then it was the kingdom of ireland and the kingdom of, of of england but was the peasants revolt not about frolicking well some say it might have been okay it might have been a factor yeah I don't really remember much history. <laughs> it's been a very weird start to the podcast. The worst one yet. <laughs> anyway, so we the boys basically went a wee bit overboard last weekend. We went on yeah. the, I mean, we went on the drink basically, mm-hmm. didn't we? Yeah. Um, along with other people, like it wasn't just me. And oh, you, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, it was. Do you think some people watch this and think that you and people watch this and think just you and me spend all our time <laughs> hanging out together, blackout drunk? <laughs> they can just hang out with nobody else. Like yeah. mm. All the friends mm. are made up. So, yeah, the last time I saw you was actually the Sunday. Yeah, and the Monday was was a free was a holiday, and yeah, I was out watching football. I was out with with a good friend, Nigel Gorman, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, things got out of hand. Uh, on the, we got we just got excited. We're on well, the pints on a Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't even have come out. Yeah, you. So you had been out the night before. Yeah, and I shouldn't have gone out that night either. Uh, and you were like, you were three sheets to the wind. Yeah. As far, from what I hear, I wasn't there, but I heard about you. Yeah, Daddy came out. Daddy came out. Yeah, no one likes Daddy, Daddy. Moon. Daddy Moon is a terrible person. Um, but yeah, you met us for a little while. Mm-hmm. Went yeah. home. Got in trouble. Got in trouble. Yeah. Went back out again. Yeah. Dangerous game. Tough, tough. Not fun. Goodness me. But anyway, look at you. You made it through. You're back Just in the good about, books. Yeah, back back in the good books. Uh, yeah. Not in the good books with myself, I think. Ah, like, yes, that's different. Yeah. I was thinking, I don't think I even enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Weekend, I, don't in, I didn't have fun. I had fun, like, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if, if you can't remember it, bank account takes a huge hit. Yes, oh, and then man. you're sort of lying there in pain. Yeah, trying to remember what you did. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. We it may be time to take a wee small break off. The, to, at least take a break off getting to that level. You know. Yeah, I mean, I watched a, a film. Just have like four beers or something like that. Yeah, but that's really hard to do. I know. Yeah, I watched a film the other night called The Way Back mm-hmm. about an alcoholic who like, you know, he like drinks all the time, like drinks in the shower, drinks when he wakes up. I was, like it makes it really uncomfortable to watch. Yes. Mm. But it's Ben Affleck playing it. Ah, uh, okay. So at the same time, you're like, oh, but he is so cool. Like he looks yeah. amazing. Like, is that what it's like to be an alcoholic? So it's, yeah, 
like it's, it's a really well done portrayal of alcoholism as like a disease. Yes. Except for the alcoholic is Ben Affleck. I know he's much too put together to be an alcoholic, isn't he? Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? The most phenomenally shaped man. Like he's not a skinny, yeah. muscular ballet dancer. He's just thick. He's a big, but, thick boy. Yeah. Like he's, he's, when people say like they want to get fit and get in shape, I think that's what they probably should aim for because that's yeah. achievable. Like he's not like zero percent body fat, shrink wrapped. This is it. They... But at the same time, you can see like his chest, his shoulders like bulging out, and he's probably got a bit of a beer belly on him. But it doesn't matter. It's you can funny. have a, you can have a beer belly as long as your shoulders are wider than that beer belly. Yes, <laughs> that's my theory. Yeah, that's my theory. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah what because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the fucking. Um, it's funny how your like your perception of what an alcoholic is changes as you grow older. Like cause when I was younger, it was like kind of down and out types who are yeah. you know fucking mumbling to themselves in the street drinking drinking on the street with fucking yeah. with big bulbous noses and you know I kind of look yeah know? but actually it's it's all around you like there's you know what I mean there's people st- having wee sneaky vodkas and all when the, during the working day like yeah do you know what I mean Pour Just it, pouring stuff in like their, their tea and things like that yeah. like middle aged women who you'd be like you wouldn't you wouldn't have them down as a fucking alky like but well yeah it's, it's like, out there you know the the middle-aged women who stay at home and stuff and have to you know, sweep the house and things, they've got nothing else to do except drink white wine. Like the rich people in the suburbs, like they're the ones um, who suffer from it. It's true. I think a lot of them, because as you say, it's, it's almost like a boredom thing. Like yeah. Once yoga's over in the morning, like you've done your yoga class. I mean, your kids are kind of grown up now. Mm. You know, what the fuck else are you going to do? Like, do you know? Do you think we're alcoholics? I don't think we're alcoholics, no. No. And alcoholics couldn't afford to drink the, the amount of drink we drank. <laughs> <laughs> a very, u- that. a very <laughs> unique approach to saving off alcoholism <laughs> would be to only drink really expensive, extravagant cocktails, <laughs> yeah. so you can just never afford to be badly alcoholic. Uh, alcoholics don't drink ne- Negronis like we do. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, because. But I, I, that was actually that's a quote from my uncle. My uncle said that. <laughs> Sam, I'm an alcoholic. Alcoholic couldn't afford to drink the way I drink. <laughs> that's very good. Um, yeah, no, this is it, mate. Um, Cause we don't I don't think it. we are alcoholics. Yeah. No, because I, th- I think like I can go a long time without drinking. Like mm-hmm. I know I can. Like we did. I've done like dry January before. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like easier than I thought and stuff like that. But I, I will say this, though. I am fond of a drink. Oh, yeah. That's my... I'm like, very fond of a drink. I worry about how much I look forward to it by about Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Mm. And I've, I've tried going out before without drinking. I'm just so fucking bored. Mm. Like Yeah, going out when you're sober, is, is it, it's a tough one. Like, yeah. When everybody else is, is, is on the drink. Especially when like, everyone else is on the drink. And you see how, like, just... You see how the, the stupidity levels of it. It yeah. makes you very stupid. <laughs> yeah. The things you come out with, like, and the things yeah. you hear... When you're sober and you, you're in, in an environment where other people are drunk, you're like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, but that's definitely yeah, yeah. us, though. Like, we people must listen to us and be like, those two guys are fucking insane. I'm like, very aware lately. And I don't uh, know if it's always been like this, but I'm very aware, usually around Canyon number three, mm-hmm. when I'm starting to get drunk, but I'm still, I still think I could probably like, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm still careful, aware. Yeah. Like, got a sober mind but i can hear myself losing the ability to talk and yeah. get my words mixed up uh, like, and that's a really weird thing to notice it's like yeah. watching it's like watching your uber driver like drunk driving but yeah. you're inside your own mind you're like something's i can see myself going wrong here yeah like, no, starting yeah. to fail but you just keep going you yep. push through oh yeah push that's through it can, can you number fucking eight yeah. well yeah the, that's what um, i noticed last night like i can do calm drinking but they get to the point in my drunkenness where i'm like it speeds up. The consumption speeds yeah. up. Yeah. So it, suddenly it, I'm drinking a Kenya every 10 minutes as opposed to making it last half an hour. I find as well, it, it depends on who you're with. But like, there's times when I drink very fast. Like, yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, I've got calm down. Like, and I'm trying to drink slower now. But like, for example, yesterday after work, I had a few drinks after work yesterday. Yeah. And one of the guys who I was having a drink with, he's just knocking them back. Like, and you, yeah. then you kind of feel like you have to keep up, keep up yeah. but you don't. You should really, like, I need to be more, like, sort of independently minded when it comes to my 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 speed of drink. You know, you don't necessarily have to match the fastest person on the fucking table. I do find take that, a moment, like, I do find that quite know? rude as well when you're with someone who drinks fast. It's annoying. Because it's, it's it? almost yeah. like they're drinking fast to mm. bear being with you. 
<laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you want to say like, "Hey, slow down! What the fuck's wrong?" Like, I uh, know, chill out. Like, you, you don't have to be here. I'll leave if you want. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I'm inclined to drink fast, and I need to be careful with that. Yeah. And go slower. Go slower. Not a race. Chill the beans. The other thing right? is the hangovers are getting worse and worse as you get older. Yes, I was a wee bit hungover this morning, mm. guess, to say the least. It's weird. Like they, they're getting worse. They last longer. Yeah. But they're not as unbearable as they used to be, which makes me think, yeah, my kidneys are dying. See, uh, <laughs> just not making the effort anymore. Something's gone wrong. Like, yeah. Look, when I when I was uh, younger, say when I was like in my early twenties, mm-hmm. um, and like late teens, mm-hmm. I would have. I was a vomiter. I would have vomited a yeah. whenever I was hungover. Oh yeah, I vomited oh, loads. I never younger. vomit anymore. Like hard, very rarely do I vomit from drink. Like barely do it. That's yeah. definitely. That's a change. Like that's changed as I got mm-hmm. older. I just have a Boston headache and just want to. Yep. Just want to be curled up in a corner. Just drink lots of you coffee. Know? I do. Um, but yeah, back then I was a big vomit guy. Yeah, I mean, we know a big vomit vomit girl. Our, our yeah, little fr- our, li- our little friend of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. vomiting she, in bins. She's a, she's a great vomit woman when yeah. she's when she's hung over. So, watch her sneak off she's to vomit. Been, yeah, yeah. <laughs> saying everybody knows what yeah, she's yeah. doing. <laughs> well, think, that's her name. I we think, don't want to yeah. embarrass her. But, like she knows. There's a certain is. amount of exhibitionism there because I've seen her vomit in bins or behind bushes yeah. with invisible sight of like port loos and public toilets. <laughs> like she'd rather it's like pissing outside. Sometimes it's fun. Yes, you want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't um, want to lose my my little our little script here. We another a, thing I found out script. recently uh, yeah. for hangovers. Do you know what makes them better for me? What's that? Being on creatine. Seriously? Yeah, the stuff that um, makes you retain water, and it makes sense because it probably. Gives you a bit of a shield against the dehydration, which That's is the big point. the big thing for your hangover. I have creatine. I haven't t- taken it in ages, like, but really? I was taking it regular enough for a while, but I, mm. I don't know why I just got out of the habit of it. But I must go back to it. Are well, yeah, it lately I've been having bad hangovers, but I got back on the creatine. Yeah. And they're not there anymore. That's it's good. like, you know, you can just drink some coffee and they're yeah. fine. This is it, though. This is it. But I, I think it's important, though, to every now and again, evaluate your relationship with alcohol. Yes, Especially, definitely. I mean... Boys like us who are like we do like to socialize, we like to have a bit of crack, and yeah. But there is you have to be aware that you you know maybe you need to take a you need to take a break, or you need yeah. to be mindful of your you know your speed of drinking and shit like that. Being know? being dependent on it for fun. Ah, it's that's what thing. I worry about. Yeah, but I hate yeah. that when I know that's happening. Exactly. Like for example, even today, like usually we'd be having a few beers now, like yeah. But we're not today because yeah, you know, don't need just, to. Last weekend almost broke yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I was waking up thinking this morning, like one of my favorite things to do on a Saturday, and I realized I was looking forward to doing it, and it disgusted me a bit. Is to wake up and drink, like I've already told you, I've drank so much coffee, I'm a bit jittery. Uh, and I yeah. like getting into that, like almost sick, coffee. almost sickening oh, yeah. coffee buzz, yeah. and then pushing it back with alcohol because there's a golden hour or so. There is actually where you're held up by the coffee, but the alcohol's relaxing you. It's true. But then the whole thing flips. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, that's a disgusting thing to enjoy. Like, I shouldn't yeah. be looking forward to essentially have an hour feeling better than normal to spend three hours on either side feeling worse than normal. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. This is it. The caffeine's definitely like it's well documented that it's 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 a drug. Like, there's oh no yeah, yeah. About it, like. most popular drug um, in civilization. But like, yeah, it's it's definitely the lesser of two evils there as regards yeah. to <laughs> two ways to that. But yeah, yeah no, nah, I know what you mean. There is there is a wee buzz. I mean, you have a coffee, like for example, I to drink that and then have a beer. You, there's you do yeah. you feel like With a million the, um, dollars, like the yeah. backswing. Yeah, when you go from caffeine high to alcohol low. Yes. But here, look at us being very reflective of, yeah. about our about our drinking habits and stuff like that. Being very, very, very candid, yeah. I would say. I mean, I'm going to have a beer today. But uh, I'm not going to have. I might have a beer many. later. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not going to have too many. Maybe this is it. But yeah, this is it. Like, just because it's, I have to remind myself. Just because it's three o'clock on a Saturday, does not mean that you should have a beer in your hand. Yeah. Like I, I used to be like, less so these days. Like, but whenever when I first moved to Barcelona and stuff, I was like. Jesus, it's two o'clock here. I haven't had a beer yet. You yeah, know, yeah. you know, it's like <laughs> that's okay, okay Michael. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fine. Take t- take a wee bit of a chill pill there, like you know. You see, like the Europeans doing it, but you have to remember they're eating as well at the same time, and then this they'll go it. and have a nap, and so, then they'll eat tons more. Speaking of Europeans, I I was on my travels recently. Yeah, you were. I was in Italia. Yeah. In Italy, in Michael's, Napoli. Ma- Michael's review of Italy. Let's go. Michael's review of Italy. It was 
wonderful, I must mm-hmm. say. Uh, we were in Napoli and then we went down the Amalfi Coast and stayed in a little tiny town called uh, Castellamare de Stabia, Lovely. which is like kind of between Sorrento and Napoli. Mm-hmm. Full of Americans, though, I will say. <laughs> um, you could not move for Americans. Glad Americans. So many Yanks. I've nothing against Americans, like, but there was just notably a lot of them. Uh, and they do tend to be quite loud. Yeah, yeah they're like the English when they're abroad. Very yeah. loud. Um, you know they're there. But it was beautiful, man. I really enjoyed Pompeii. Pompeii was class. Yeah. Very dick heavy, you know, very dick centric. They love the dick, the Romans. Big fans. Yeah. Um, and also a lot of knocking shops and well the, in fact the penises would direct you to the not yeah to the, the prostitutes to the the bordellos okay to, that's what they're called to, to give it its proper title mm-hmm. um but yeah so italy was beautiful the people are so nice man the italian people are so welcoming i yeah. find them very very welcoming very funny very like just happy to meet you basically like you know and i contrast that a little bit with here yeah in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah you don't get the same welcome here. No. Let's put it that way. Like, to, you know? In terms of like... <laughs> no, there's some lovely people here, don't get me wrong. But there's, yeah. generally speaking, I mean, like as regards like service and stuff like that, it's much higher standard. Because in terms of what they rely on for income, like they're both sort of tourist heavy mm. areas. Uh, true. In terms of their market. But in yeah. Italy, they're nice to you. They're, they're genuinely good. Like, they seem to want you to go away. Well, yes. they write it on the wall. <laughs> tourists go, home. go home. Yeah. And like... Yeah, I think they they appreciate the fact that you're you're in there spending money and you're yeah. and you're enjoying their local food and they're very they have a lot of pride in their food. I had the best pizza probably had in my life in that in Naples. Like it it's was good. just wonderful. Wonderful pizza. And the thing about it is, man, it's so late as well. You eat one of them pizzas, yeah. those Neapolitan style that, yeah. ones, and you're not bloated. And you know I, I one of my things, I'm constantly battling the bloat. Yes, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm always, I'm, I'm at fucking loggerheads with the bloat, yeah. constantly, you know. Okay. And th- that was great for the bloat. Okay. It, it, non bloat pizza. Because I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's fermented for so long or whatever it is, but it's not. You don't get that. Yeah. You know, which I was delighted with. And are they thin crusted pizzas? They're, they're kind of, kind of puffy, but they're, they're, you know, they got that kind of burny sort of edge. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. Nice. Oh, that's so good, man. It man, was delightful. Good, yeah. Um, but listen, this is going to lead me into Mike's grapes. Okay. All right. Let's gripe. So it's time to gripe. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Mike's grapes. It's a holiday inspired gripe. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned this already. It's not specific to Americans. I'm not being like, you know, whatever. I'm not being discriminating against Americans here, whatever. Right. But obnoxious tourists. Okay. It's my gripe this week. I'm talking, so I'll give you, I'll paint the picture for you. We're in the island of Capri, mm-hmm. right? It's been a fucking movie set. Giorgio Armani has a fucking house there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Beautiful, beautiful place, right? You're sitting there, I'm enjoying it. I'm Andrea's away poking about the shops. Mm-hmm. I'm having a wee drink of coffee or some shit. I can't remember, right? Bunch of tourists come in, ask me where they're from. America. They're from America, yeah. They're from America, right? Yeah. Honestly, immediately the decibel levels go through the roof. <laughs> like it had been just a nice, quiet. Obviously, Italians aren't aren't quiet people. Like, but you know, it was it was, it was at a at a reasonable level, mm. tolerable, right? They come in, my eardrums are nearly burst, and it's all just wah wah wah. It's not like you know, it's all just talking about fucking. Things of zero consequence, yeah, yeah. And just, just like, oh, sh- what it is, it's loud and it's crass. Yeah, right. It's yeah. loud and crass, <laughs> and also, the guy. There's a guy right in this party. I think it was like a party of six or seven of them. Mm. This guy, probably in his, probably in his late forties, early fifties, sits down, ordering a drink. He's taking up way too much space, way more yeah. space than he should be. Puts his feet up. Puts his fucking feet up on the seat right and a bear to mind like this is this is like this isn't this is a fucking restaurant right it's a bar a restaurant like mm-hmm. what the fuck are you doing but he did it and i was thinking i wonder will the man say something the italian fella the the, the waiter or the manager didn't say anything like took his order Jeez, and he was too bro. polite to say anything 
I thought about me, I'd be like, excuse me, sir, but do you mind taking your shoes off the seat, please? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's have some no, fucking yeah. decorum. Have some respect for your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, and it, it, it's just, it was obnoxious, is what it was, Tom. And it, it just, it, it, it made me gripe hard. I was yeah. looking over and I was going, shaking my head like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Putting his feet up. Like, I, I, by all means, make yourself comfortable, but putting your feet up in a fucking restaurant, what do you think this is? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's disgusting. Yeah. Fucking. But it's not <laughs> exclusive to Americans. Like, obviously, there's Irish people go abroad and they're fucking obnoxious and all do. But this group in particular just fucking wound me up. Yeah. I'm thinking, at least have some respect for where you are. Like, and have some respect for the people who are working here. Take your fucking feet off the seat. Do you well, know what I mean? Yeah, address the elephant in the room for oh, obnoxious really, tourists. Yeah, the gripes really get my blood pressure going. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, sorry, say it again. Yeah, addressing the elephant in the room for obnoxious tourists. These guys <laughs> in the town centre here. English. Like, yeah. English, yeah. Mm. And it's like you can sit in like a like a nice terrace in Barcelona. Yeah. And the square will go quiet when a bunch of like loud English lads walk through, tops off. Yes, yeah, and yeah. But the English lads are the only people who do that here. I walking know. around the town centre with their tops off and like so drunk their eyes are just red. They're uh, sunburnt, drinking beers in public and just yeah. shouting at each other. Like the top off in public thing is if uh, come on, if, if you cannot on, see like, a body of water, yeah. put your fucking shirt on. Yeah, I think that's a general rule, like, isn't it? Yeah. Um but yeah, listen, by all means Tourism is a good thing. Like mm-hmm. I think tourism is a positive thing. Generally, it's, it's you see things, and obviously, I was a tourist, and probably people look at me going, "Look at that wee fucking Irish prick." Mm. Who knows, right? But um, if you're going to go to another country, I think you should have a bit of a bit of like a bit more demure, be a bit more demure, a bit more fucking chill, yeah, and a bit quieter. Just be a bit quieter. Mm-hmm. Speak softly to the people, yeah. to the server. Be conscious and be of your surroundings. Polite. Yeah. You know, stop being an animal. Fucking, I, I, it was born. I, yeah. I was more angry. I was more angry than the bloody manager. Yeah, of the place he seemed to be. All right. I don't know if he was all right, but he was just being welcoming, I suppose. But if that had been me, I'd have been like, "Excuse me, so It's probably you know? not even the worst tourist he saw that day. Probably not. Yeah, yeah like you could not move for them. Like for mm-hmm. for 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 tourists, and there was a tourist from all over the world. There was a lot of Irish as well. Like, yeah, you know, um, and generally speaking, like you know, there's no issue or whatever. But it's just whenever tourists take it upon themselves to be like they're it's like they're invading almost and yeah, yeah. being like uh, i'm here and i and you know well, i think it's poorly Have educated fucking respect they're you know poorly I mean? educated like it it, it it travel used to be quite a hard thing to undertake and now you open a newspaper and there's a whole page ad saying pay this amount of money yeah. and we will put you here feed you give you somewhere to sleep pick you up from the airport all you have to do is pay this money and you'll spend a week in capri it's true and yeah. mm-hmm. we will handle everything like and you know, in a, a lot of it's a positive thing it. that in a yeah, lot of ways yeah. like you know, you know travel educates it you it but... makes it more it's democratized it a bit more it's you know you you, you can save up a bit and mm. with it with it with a sort of reasonably well-paying job and you can go to go somewhere nice you know these days yeah and you made a good point recently actually i remember you saying that our generation sort of more so than maybe previous take a lot of validation get a get a lot of validation from travel and from yeah, experience yeah. from That's experience how they build their things. identity mm. Mm. I like i see a lot on tiktok these days like uh like people who like making tiktoks like planning my next uh holiday like planning my next travel route like yeah. talking about traveling as a lifestyle yeah. but it's not a lifestyle for them because you have to save the money and if you but well, I guess there's a few people who are genuinely paid to travel as yeah. travel bloggers or stuff, or they made uh, their income. But the majority of people mm. are people whose entire identity as a traveler is based around working for digital nine nomads. tenths of their life. Well, yeah. that as well. But the mm. truth about a digital nomad is you're fucking lonely. Like, I would say so. I'm yeah. on digital nomad boards and stuff, and all of them are like anyone living in Lima, Peru, who wants to hang out. Yeah. And then like three or four people will be like, yeah, let's go for a bit. That is a terrible way to make friends. You're not going to yeah. meet anyone worth hanging around with by reaching out onto the internet yeah. to meet with other people who are like that. Yeah, the like, friendships tip would be like transient friendships. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Or you, you know, when you hang out it's with shallow. someone who's got no one else to hang around with, and you yeah. just sit there drinking, like the mm. worst kind of friendships. You might you're better off being alone. This is it. I, I was told recently as well to be. Where the fuck that come from? Anyway, never mind. <laughs> um, somebody was telling me recently that 
to be a digital nomad, you need like a certain amount of money in the bank or something. For to, a like, lot register. of the visas, yeah, it's expensive. A lot of visas, yeah, yeah, to get a visa. Mm. Have to, I think in Spain, it had, you have to have like 25,000 or something like that there. In your Sounds bank about right, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's the fucking, you need, you need to get saving. But yeah, no, this is it. I think that um, we do, as a generation, we do we do tend to, we, our experiences of travel are, are very mm-hmm. meaningful for us, I think, yeah. do you know? More so in previous generations, I think, like, for example, the boomers. Yeah. We're talking very general here. Yeah. And it's just a bit of crack. But the boomers got a lot of validation from owning property. Owning things, yeah. That's how they validate themselves. Materialism. Yeah. Materialism. Mater- yeah. Like, our generation isn't very materialistic. And there's cer- there's so. a certain bounce back towards that, though, with, like, Balenciaga and yes. all these, you know, owning the shirt with, like, champion written on it or supreme but yeah. that's not really materialism. That's like I'd say hype beast culture is yeah. so is so materialistic. It's not materialism. Yeah. Because all these things look awful yeah. or are just very very plain with a single thing on it. It's like tribalism. Yeah. Brand. But Supreme. That's a weird one as well. Talking about boomers and identity. Yeah. Here's a question I've been wanting to ask you for ages, and I keep forgetting to ask you it because this is so fucking weird to me. A lot of the time on the internet. As you know, maybe the viewers don't, I love getting into arguments on the internet with people taking any opposing political viewpoint and dying on that hill, making up facts and studies, linking people to those facts and studies, always linking to the same picture of Harrison Ford, by the way, (laughs) because no one ever clicks the links. That's what I worked out. You can say, actually, here's a study that proves you're wrong. (laughs) Send the link and just write, because you know, in links, when you you write a link, you can write the link and Mm -hmm. then the target. Yes. Target it to the same picture of Harrison Ford and then make the link like uh, yeah. www.edu.harvard forward slash study. Tom Moon special. It's a, there's a Tom Moon way to win, uh, win an argument. Yes, on the internet. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I do. And a lot of the time when it comes to like, when it comes to identity and politics and stuff, inevitably you're arguing with an American who will say, well, actually, I'm 50% Irish, quarter Italian, quarter German. Mm-hmm. And uh, when the Irish gets up in me, I, and I said, stop, you're 100% American. Yes. How do you feel about that when you say you're from Ireland to an American tourist and they say, oh, I'm 50% Irish? Does that mean um, anything to you? Because it's definitely an American thing yes. to do an Ancestry.com thing and then yeah. assume that culture is part of your identity when you found out. And I it means think nothing. So. I think maybe it's because America is such a, still such a young nation, yeah. young country, hmm. that they, they sort of a, they'll go back into their ancestry to try and form a, a national identity yeah a bit more of solid identity. history but yeah like the, as the, the, the as regards that that is a fucking that's like a like a meme now like the, yeah they would say oh my great great grandfather was irish or whatever yeah um listen man it, it doesn't bother me it's just like i feel like it's i don't know this is probably like a it's a symptom of having like a green tinted glasses looking back yeah. into the into Ireland's past and wanting to be associated with that. Yeah. Um, by all means, like knock yourself out. It doesn't fucking bother me that much. To be mm. fair, it's a bit annoying, I suppose. Whenever they're, I, I don't know. You, you just, it's a bit annoying <laughs> when, when they that, die when in this, the river green. In yeah, or, 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 <laughs> or yeah, kind of paddy whackery. Yeah. You know, it's quite outdated now. This notion that. We're all fucking jam- dancing jigs on the crossroads, drinking fucking yeah, I find from that. a like it's, bottle or whatever, you know? Because if you did yeah. that for, like, other cultures, mm. do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it dyed the river green, wearing the little hats on St. Patrick's yeah. Day, yeah. only drinking Guinness there. And, the hats annoy me, yeah. And saying, like, oh, it's St. Patrick's Day, let's get blackout drunk in celebration of this culture. Know, because, yeah. like, that's a real racial... Like, imagine if you yeah. dyed the river red, put on a feathered headdress, and yes. then, yeah drank gin until you passed out like i know yeah i know this is it i but yeah it's it's, a, it's an interesting thing this that sort of that this it's it's become it's it's not just american now with the advent of these sort of ancestry.com type yeah. websites and stuff like this people wanting to delve into their genetic history and use that sort of genetic history to help to help them form an identity today yeah exactly and it's i mean come on Fuck, like, yeah. right? also, just, those things are bullshit, aren't yeah. they? Like, you can't just 
take someone's DNA and then pick yeah. an arbitrary point in human evolution. Like, yeah. because you know, technically you could say we're all 100% African in origin because yeah, that's where absolutely. the species comes from. But exactly. they're just picking some point and yeah. it seems to vary from person to person. And then they're saying like, oh, you're 20% Indo-European, 40% yeah. African. Like that means nothing. I know. Then I think they're making it up, you know? It's, 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 it's very like first world, this like, yeah. it's, it's just, you know what I mean? Imagine like people in, you know, somewhere in fucking in, down in Africa or whatever, like reading about this, going, mm. these fucking dickheads, like That's there's a fucking problem with the yeah. money. Looking into their I'd love to, I'd love <laughs> to do that. It is the... kind of interesting to be fair though. Like I, I, but I would hesitate to do it, you know? It's... Yeah. I don't want to get on their database. Yeah. There's, I don't there's, people like who get, that. there's people who get arrested because yeah. like their cousin took it. Uh, and they get a match for like a crime. Something that happened. They or prove them wrong. They're like, well, we're gonna. Mm. That's enough to like check all your family members out. Yeah. And then they'll get a hit on someone. This is it. Yeah. Um, but I, mean, I would be curious to know. I would be curious to know my genetic. I suppose it would be interesting to, to see where various people came from, grandparents in the past, yeah. and stuff like that. But do you think, like, if you did, if you did three of them, do you think you'd get the same results consistently? Because I really wouldn't be surprised. I think there would be yeah, some variation. I, I think they make yeah, it up. I think so. I think there's a bit of bullshit there. They'll, they'll like, all you know, probably put a big portion of it. All right, you're Irish. You're yeah. small. You, they can, you can infer basically. Yeah, exactly. A lot yeah. of it, I think. Like, well, I think like there's no point in me doing one. Well, my dad's yeah. traced the family tree on both sides. We yes. come from, like, if you go back four or five generations. Both sides of my family are living within a few miles of each other. So there's obviously yeah. inbreeding, which is great. <laughs> yeah. It's all in Northern Yorkshire. As far as I can tell, yeah. my grandfather or my great grandfathers on both sides were the first generation in about 600 years of moons to spend their lives above ground. Yes. The rest were iron miners were and miners, spent most yeah. of their lives as subterranean creatures. Yes. Tough job, that. This is it. Like, I, I would I would be very surprised if I wasn't like, you know, Ninety percent Irish or something. Like <laughs> yeah, that. I don't Do you know think what I mean? it's going like, to be someone more Irish you know, than you. <laughs> I mean, I would say so, but I would say there's there, there's definitely a, probably a sprinkle of English and Scottish and and probably some fucking uh, Scandinavian in there from, yeah. from the Vikings from the Viking conquest. Well, definitely um, people have been bouncing between some, Liverpool and Dublin for the last yeah. five hundred odd years. There's probably some. Like whatever, some Anglo fucking Norman or whatever as well. Yeah. We're a hodgepodge. We're a hodgepodge mix. All yeah. of us, for fuck's sake. Spanish you know I mean? as well. A lot of Spanish in Ireland. They yeah, washed there's a bit stuff of, from the Armada. Yeah, there's there's definitely a bit of supposedly Spanish yeah. fucking well, Spanish as well. I, I think I heard somewhere recently that's not true. Like about the Armada thing. Yeah, about the Armada thing. They would have just washed up and then the Irish instantly killed them and jobbed probably, out. Probably, <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably or and or plundered them. You yeah. Know? But at the same time. Uh, Spain was always kind of like a little bit of an ally to some of the Gaelic lords and, oh, really? and chieftains and whatnot. Yeah, because of the the Catholicism and the enemy of my enemy is my friend yes, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, because the Spanish the Spanish actually sent military help to Ireland at one point during the Nine Years' War. You want to bore everyone now with some history? <laughs> We're going uh, which was a war between Irish Gaelic lords and uh, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, um, England. Um, but yeah, the, the Spanish sent troops and they basically got hemmed into a part of a little town in Cork called Kinsale. Mm -hmm. And the Gaelic lords had to march the length of Ireland down to relieve the siege and to help the Spanish troops. The Spanish yeah. troops were supposed to be there to fucking help them. Yeah, ended up. They had to yeah. go and bail them out. But <laughs> whilst they did that, the English lured them into bad ground ah. and it was just a fucking massacre. I mean, that's classic um, English and also classic Spanish. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think they were successful in rescuing yeah. any of the Spanish, actually, in the end. But it's a thought that counts. Yeah, it's a thought yeah. that counts, yeah. But, yeah, there was, all, there was like, traditional links there. Like, oh. Do you know? It's cool. But because it, Mostly because of Catholicism. The French sent help as well. There was a storm. There was a big storm. This, this is later, like, a few hundred years later. Um, that destroyed their armada that was mm. on the way to, to invade Ireland and to help, suppose. But then they probably probably would have stuck around and just ended up being French fucking yeah. colonizers there. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, who knows what would have happened? Do you know? But mean? anyway, Tom, we digress. Yes. We must go back on track here. Yeah. We've got a list of stuff Oh, yeah. We've got things about. to talk about. What have we got there? So we've done Mike's gripes. Yes. Uh, we addressed the week off and her fucking shenanigans last weekend. What okay. about movie ideas? movie ideas, Tom? I have had a few. Uh, my phone appears to be overheating. Um. Yes. I can't read it. Oh, it's because I've got sunglasses on. That's why. That'll be it, yeah. man. 
It's not much better, but I can try. <laughs> Wearing black jeans in the uh, in the heat. sunlight. Yeah. It's got hot. Mistake. Yeah, this is only happening That's this week. That's hot. No, yeah, the, uh, once again, the movie ideas were written in sort of, not blackout, but maybe a hangover, alcoholic fury. Um, well, I'm excited. The caffeine has kicked in from this cafe latte. Yeah, what's I'm going on here? I can't read just... them. Oh, there they are. Okay, Tom. Okay. Take it away. Yeah, I went Harry Potter. I've been thinking a lot about Harry Potter this week. Um, Harry Potter, they're making a new fucking TV show. Did yeah. You see that? It's ridiculous. It's like, pointless. Man. Leave it. It's yeah. done. It was It was fine it when was we did it. What's wrong with it? Um, Is it? Do they want to, like, wokeify it or something? Oh, they'll definitely wokeify it. But I think they just still haven't addressed the main problems in Harry Potter. Which is? Well, like, you can't... My problem with the first Harry Potter book is you say to this young boy who's been bullied all his life and abused, hey, you can do magic now. Here's a wand to do it with, and here's books describing all the magic you can do with this wand. Yes. Now sit on this train to Scotland for six hours and don't hurt yourself. Yeah, it, there was the, a lack of supervision. And yeah. the fact that Hagrid just vanishes mm -hmm. and leaves him in London yeah. to try and find Platform 9 and I mean, quarters. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Harry went on a rampage then, taking out like, yeah. like the years of abuse he suffered by Uncle Vernon. It's like, oh, this this spell will tell me how to like petrify people, like what was it? Petrificus Totalus. Just do that to uh, Uncle Vernon and kick the living shit fun. out of him until the spare wells. Uh, you'd hundred percent yeah. be looking for revenge, like yeah, wouldn't you? And I wouldn't let a girl who's in the same position cast Oculus Reparo yeah. on my face. I know, yeah. You'd you snap the wand out of her hand. I mean, there's no evidence. In, in any of the books that magicians have any ability to cure ocular diseases because Harry still wears fucking glasses. It's true, yeah. Yeah, and you're going to let a little girl... I wouldn't let a little girl point a stick at my face anyway, there's let some, alone if the stick did magic. There's a, there's glaring plot holes here. It's glaring. Yeah, yeah in this book about wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom. Anyway, the first one, uh, it's called... Uh, oof, and yeah, might have to cut this one out straight off the bat. Oh. Uh, Harry Potter and the reintegration of what were previously considered less able children back into mainstream schools. Okay, that has yep, to that's go. got to go. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, that's sorry, dude. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> It's very funny though. Oh, I don't remember writing that last bit. Um, <laughs> Hagrid's like a big fucking one of those guys, you know, in like one of the fools yeah. the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he is. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, that one's got to go. This one's definitely got to go. Uh, Planet of the Apes, the final solution uh, to the human question. Um, oh, Planet of the Apes, the final solution to the human question is Schindler's List, but all the Nazis are apes. Schindler is a kindly orangutan who employs as many humans as he can in his banana peeling factory, Oscar Bait. <laughs> I don't know. Oscar bit once again, eh? I need to the stop. Academy are going to be chomping at the bit. I need to stop doing these when I'm drunk or like review them before I read them on the podcast. I think you're going to like. <laughs> cool. uh, this one is either called Gladiator or Carry On Up the Coliseum. Uh, <laughs> Carry On Up the Coliseum. A Roman general is betrayed by the country he loves and cast down into slavery where he is sold on to a theatre company. And forced to perform as an over-the-top pantomime dame. Okay. Uh, film slowly transforms from swords and sandals epic into drag comedy, innuendo-filled romp. Something for all the family. A Christmas movie. Slave, you'll remove your wig and tell me your name. He's behind you. Oh, Maximus, that spear's all up in me, Jaxie. <laughs> Yeah, Where, were you watching a documentary about Rome or something, or I don't something know. happened? My girlfriend told me a few weeks ago I watched Gladiator and just burst into tears and went to bed. So it's probably probably that <laughs> night. Um. <laughs> oh dear! Yeah. Oh dear. That's all we got on the movie ideas front. We might have to cut oh, all of them out. I mean, the Roman one could maybe stay in. Yeah, I think that could stay in. Um, the banana peel one. The... <laughs> I don't know. You've got another. You've got an obsession with Oscar Schindler as well. I just think he's cool. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's movie ideas, they're getting better and better. Yeah, and you're going to have to cut most of them out. They're getting fucking crazy is what they're doing. Getting... Right, listen, Tom, mm-hmm. it's ta- that time again. So sure. the last podcast, we've been very fucking low energy today, haven't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah. We need to pick things up here. Yeah, should we should have some beers. We should have had beers. Yeah, yeah. Beers. It's a mistake not right. to have beers. So, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? I'm just getting the giggles. Um, <laughs> last week we ha- we had <laughs> Belfast isms, right? Yes. Belfast sayings. Now we're going back to the northwest, okay. Donegal, for some of uh, John John Muldowney's famous famous sayings yes. or ones that he's collected over the years, okay. right? I have to get my little list here, or envelope, and my spectacles. So I prepare myself for the read. Smoking glasses have seen better days, you know. <laughs> Look at this fucking stain on them, like Jesus. Yeah, maybe clean them. Right. So, um, okay, Tom. That fella would drink pish from a cow track. What do you think that refers to? It's, uh, I mean, that's got to be a man who's heavily into his alcohol. It's a man who is fond of the gargle. Yes. Do you know, we drink piss from a cow track. He, he so cow trap. He would uh, from a cow track. What is that? So like. A track that it's left behind, like a footprint. Oh, and would cows pissing pish. those. He would drink pish from a cow track. This I've is... also heard a variation. He would drink. He would, he would drink. Uh, drink it out of a tramp shoe. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that one before. It's just disgusting. <sighs> Have you got any ones like that for someone who just is, is a is a, a great man for the booze? No, it's it's not a big place for sayings the south of England. No, not really a big place for talking very, to people. Very yeah, to the point. Straight to the point. Anglo-Saxon. Write a letter. Yeah. Okay. Um, if he was any thinner, the one I would do him. Did we have that before? Yeah, we had that one before. Fuck. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good one. I've shafted it. I've, made it. I've, I've ruined the segment. Um, I only drink. <laughs> this is a quote from an f- Irish writer. Mm-hmm. I only drink on two occasions when I'm thirsty and when I'm not. That's great. People wonder why we have a reputation for being a wee bit, you know, rambunctious with the, with the, with the liquor. Yeah. I mean, some of our famous <laughs> yeah. writers come out with stuff like just that. Just drinking all the time. <laughs> there's, a, there's a one, um, there's another one he did, uh, Work is the Curse of the Drinking Classes. That's, That's another great. Another Brendan Behan one. Um, and there is was he, another one. Is um, he the guy who's um, who's got that, there's that video <coughs> interview of him where his wife's talking about how. That's in- a different guy. I was just <laughs> about to bring that up. Yeah. So I believe that's John B. Keane. Okay. Um, that that video is wild. Like, yeah. But it's like, he's so poetic about it, about drink. It makes you want to be an alcoholic, yeah. If anybody has seen this, maybe, maybe we could stitch a wee bit of it into this. I'll see if I can stick it. Like, just you know? the bit where his wife says, like, you're horrible when you're not drinking. Like, I tell you, go and have a drink. We, 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 we tell him, walk one now and have a drink. <laughs> He'll be beating his hands bloody on the wall. He'll be very angry. But when he takes a drink now, he's grand. He's fine. This is you know? safe. You know? There's no man been born in this earth with the love of liquor as much as I do. You know? I love I love the plop. I love the yeah, violent hit yeah. of the whiskey as I chase it down with a pint or whatever. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> it's yeah, like, that's great. But it's definitely not something to listen to if you're an alcoholic yeah. or you're struggling with drink or you've been mm. sober for a while and you don't want to go on the drink. Because he's just like, you're like, fuck, right? I, I would love a beer right now. <laughs> well, there is something romantic, like, about the classic sort of alcoholic, especially, mm. like, the Irish ones. But, you, like, you just don't see the reality of it. The it's reality like a, of it's it a is It's a romantic ideal, yeah. Like, yeah. like, for example, what do you call it? The romantic notion of alcoholism, that uh, writer, Charles Bukowski. Yeah. Um, I read one of his books last year, Factotum, and it's just, like, his, like, basically like memoirs like diary of when he was on it on just on the drink man yeah on his in his 20s like and the things he got up to and it's it's funny and it's a good read but it's also bleak and yeah. dark and like fuck me like heartbreak and yeah. stuff like do you it's know it's not fun it's not fun yeah um i can't believe i fucking used one of the other sayings it's okay I can't, I can't, because they're all recorded. Yeah. So I can't be like pulling them out now to see what yeah. <laughs> to, do, to do another one. What, do you not have any others? I don't have any oh, others. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'll be fine. <laughs> That'll do for now. It can't be worse than my movie ideas, which all turned out to be horrible. Oh, Tom. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I have another thing I want to ask you about. Yeah. 
what a podcast this yeah. is. Uh, this is real good shit. Some low um, energy hadron collider. So, yes, this is a listener contribution. Mm-hmm. Zombie apocalypse. Oh. We haven't talked about this, right? No, no. This is a cool zombie apocalypse, Tom. Like Last of Us style. Mm-hmm. You've been made aware of it. What's your first move? What are you doing? Find a tower. Mm-hmm. Live at the top of the tower. I was thinking tower too. Mm. I'm a big guy for towers anyway. That fucking one there. That one, yeah. Going straight up there. Yeah. And then, I don't know, killing my enemies. There's a there's a, um, there's a shop in Grassy that sells crossbows. Have you ever seen it? A lot of windows, though, in that tower. Is that a disadvantage, having so many big windows? Because people could, do you know what I mean? See you walking around or, or like the, the, wee, the wee like gremlin fucking uh, zombies could see you and want to crawl up. Or well, I think in any zombie apocalypse, the problem is the zombies is the survivors. It is, yeah. Hmm. It's, the, it's the bandits. And yeah, the bandits. Like you, we've both read fucking what do you call him? We've both read the road, Carmen yeah, McCarthy. That's what you have And like it was the people. It was wasn't even apocalyptic. It wasn't zombie. It was post apocalyptic, but it was just like roving bands of marauders. Yeah, that's I mean, the worry. You, you you need to defend yourself from them. There's a like I said, there's a shop in Grassy that sells crossbows. So I'm going straight in there and taking all the crossbows. Yeah, denial of resources, all I, of them for me. Here's the thing about, about the conversations like this and the mm-hmm. scenario like this: you need to be, you need to have the jump on everyone else. Mm-hmm. So say you've got prior knowledge, you've got like you've got 24 hours to prepare yourself. That's the sort of and yeah. Then everybody, everybody else is going to be made aware. Yeah. Of it. So you need to get fucking shit done quick. What you like? I would think a flight somewhere, man. Yeah, I think what you need to do is realize that. The majority of the killing and the dying is going to happen in the first week or so. Yes. So you need to get out of here for a week. I'd take one of the yachts yeah. in the port. To, I thought about and that And then too. get about 30, 30 meters away uh, from the shore. So I can see what's going on. And yes. like if people are asking for help, I can say no. <laughs> nope. No can do. My hands are tied. Oh, <laughs> My hands are, I don't um, know how to drive this. <laughs> yes. But so you're thinking, so if you, for example, maybe you had the stay in Barcelona, you'd steal a yacht. First of all, go get the crossbows, get the weaponry. crossbows. Cheese wire as well from cheese the wire. nice charcuterie place. Yes. Um, because cheese wire is very handy in a zombie apocalypse. And let's face it, you take some cheese too. When I you're take there. all the cheese. I get proper, some, nice, I, some nice camembert. I mainly live off fish that I pull out of the water yeah. and delicious cheeses. Yeah. And like <laughs> loads of wine. Get really you need che- a lot of wine. Get really cheese fat during the zombie <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm delicious. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, oh, you're definitely stocking up on the good snacks. Like, yeah, yeah. Snacking. <laughs> I can't cook anyway. Yeah. So I'm designed for a zombie apocalypse. Because yes. I pretty much eat like I'm in one. Yeah. I'm left to my own devices. I'm thinking, yeah, crossbow's a good one. And mm-hmm. samurai sword for up close and personal stuff. Yeah. You just yeah, that's lop good. a head off for that. Or what's the, um, I think you wouldn't, you wouldn't like something as easy to use, like what the, the kukri, the curved, um, Hooked blades. Ah, I want to They're quite them. short, you know. Yeah. Samurai sword's good. I'd, I'd cut my own leg off with a samurai sword instantly. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe a machete, but again, I'd hurt machete. myself. Rope. Mm. You need a lot of rope. You need a lot of rope. You need, as well, dental equipment, because that's what will kill you eventually. You'll point. get a bad tooth, yeah. and it will get infected, and you'll die. Or you, won't, or you won't be able to eat enough because your tooth hurts. How shitty would that be? Yeah. So you need, you need Novocaine to numb your mouth and good pliers to pull out the bad teeth. A lot of Novocaine. Mm. This is it. If 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 in the scenario is that you could go somewhere, you've got twenty four hours, and you, I think, honestly, the west of Ireland's going to be the last place to get hit. Like <laughs> the parts of the parts of the west of Ireland where the zombie apocalypse yeah. has already happened. I mean, <laughs> uh, I am, like yeah. I think, like the outer regions of Donegal are going to be relatively all right for a while. It's mm-hmm. gonna it's gonna take a definitely a few weeks to hit there. Like go to one of the islands yeah. off the coast of Ireland. Well, that's the dream, isn't it? You get an island. And you stay yeah. on the island. Yeah, I think boredom's the big killer as well. Bored, uh, boredom and dental problems. Imagine the internet just gone as well. No internet. Do you know what I mean? I'd probably kill myself. <laughs> probably just end it. Um, nah, it's not the scenario, Tom. No, you sorry. To survive. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, gotta rebuild. Rebuild. You gotta, you and your good lady, I have gotta have kids and stuff yeah. on this island. Christ, can you imagine if we rebuilt you know? civilization? How Dude. fucking weird it would be. <laughs> I know, and like the weird thing about that as well, like imagine you were the last, your kids would have to, do you know? Yeah, yeah, I well, mean, that's I think, not good. Like, yeah, I think realistically, genetic mistake. it ends. Yeah, it ends. Probably does, doesn't it? Mm. Not a good one. Hopefully, there's no zombie apocalypse. I have, an, I have another scenario for, for you, which I've been wanting to ask you for a while. And it's because uh, I know the answer to it, but I want you to re explain it. Okay. You're on a flight. Yes. 
gets hijacked and they're going towards a building. They're going to fly into a building, they tell you. Yeah. You're basically in a 9-11 situation. Shit. How do you retake the plane? How do I retake the plane? Yeah, I think you've told me your, your theory on this before. Uh, so, I'm not, I'm not a big man for buying bottles of booze when I'm in the mm-hmm. duty free. Yeah. But I would have a scan around. Scan around. Mm-hmm. See, maybe, so for example, maybe there's a nice young chap beside me. Yeah. Who's got a bottle of Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. I say, listen, buddy, a bottle, give it to me. Okay. I said, why, why? Because, listen, you'll fucking see, all right? Mm-hmm. Bottle of Jack Daniels. Hijacker's walking up and down the aisle. He's eyeballing people. I'm just sitting calm, as cool and calm as you like. Yeah. He walks past, and as he walks past, I leap out of the seat <laughs> yeah. and crack him over the head with the yeah. fucking bottle of Jack Daniels. Yeah. Smashing it. Okay. He's fucking out. He's yeah. out for the count. He's yeah. bleeding. Mm-hmm. Finish him off with the fucking shard of glass. Mm-hmm. And the, the other boys come after me. But at this stage, because I've because I've led the charge, yeah. so to speak, everybody else goes a big set of balls, and we all fucking dive on them. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I'm jamming away with the broken glass. Yeah. And... uh and uh, we, we retake the plane. How do you open the cockpit Smooth door? Smooth landing. I, you... I get on the Google and Google <laughs> how to land a plane. How do you open the cockpit door if they've locked themselves in? Tell them, it's me, it's Mick. <laughs> and they let me in. What? Just rely on them knowing someone called Mick. <laughs> rely on one of the hijackers outside the locked door being called Mick. But you tell, he's shouting through, listen, we've retaken, we've killed the, the hijack, or we've got them tied up oh, or whatever. No, 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 the hijackers are flying the plane. Oh, they're, they're already flying they're the in the cockpit and they've locked the door like they did in 9 11. Oh, fuck i didn't know that like oh. i thought they were up and down the cabin I was... no yeah there, there was ah, there's one or two guarding you oh, but... we're in trouble then we're okay. in trouble. <laughs> how am i gonna i maybe i could oh, no i see I, I always think as well you could start a fire or something but but how how are you getting in that door is how the does, problem how does starting a fire make the situation any better for you I, 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 how how are you going to get them out like you can't you can't coax them out with any kind of treats or anything like that. <laughs> or, you know, you no. can't say, Oh, Miss World's back here, she wants yeah. to give you a fucking BJ or whatever, yeah. you know. Um no, so I don't you, you can't get them out of there. You're fucked. There must be a secret way in. You think so? A I little hatch. Yeah, but there's those um, those weird pilots who occasionally just lock themselves in and then crash into mountains and stuff, aren't they? Yeah, man. Oh, fuck, I, I, I'm already a nervous flyer. You're fucking mm. making me more nervous now. Well, I have an yeah. escape route. I'm 90% positive if you open the door on a plane yeah. and you've got the, you know, the slide that comes out when you do an ocean landing, yeah. if you inflated that slide and grabbed it as it was inflating yes. and you fell holding on to the, the slide, yeah. it would slow you down enough that you'd survive the fall. That's, that's, I think, that's the, I think the slide would act as a parachute. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, you ever seen like um, what's it called? A, a bouncy castle blow yeah. away in a strong wind. When yeah. it comes back, like kids get trapped in it, it lands, and they're usually fine. So in your scenario, you're not retaking the plane; you're just abandoning ship. I'm leaving every. Well, I'm going to try. I'll give it a go. You give it a, an old bit of bog effort. What I do, I think you've got to get a weapon. Yeah. And you're either going to boil water and put all the sugar in it to make napalm. Yeah. But that's difficult to yeah. throw. I mean, you could put it in socks. Mm-hmm. And then throw the socks of napalm at people, but again, you don't want to be dealing with napalm ever, I, in, really, uh, especially ever, in, in the uh, air up there. Yeah, napalm's a tricky one. I think the best place to find a weapon is to ask all the women on the flight, get your makeup bags out, and one of them's going to have those little scissors that have uh, no use. Or there might be a woman who has pepper spray. Sometimes women carry pepper spray, uh, so they go, yeah, Ksh! yeah, you know? and he wouldn't be attackers. I think the 9 11 guys pepper sprayed. The, the whole of first cup, first class, and no one could get near the door. Bastards. So you'd have to wrap your head in cling film. What a sh- what an awful shower they were. Eh? Not a they shower were real of cunts they were. The nine eleven lot. Fuck's sake, like you yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. Nah, like yeah, this is it. It's. I think you're gonna go. You're gonna die anyway, right? Mm. In this scenario, you might as well go out swinging. Yeah. I would say. Or falling from the sky, hurtling yeah. to the ground, holding onto a slide. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. As, I, as I'm saying, I remember where I saw it, and it was at Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah. Where they do that. They uh, they hold on to like an emergency life raft and jump yeah. out of the plane. And, and, it, and it worked for Indy? In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, uh, it works. It's a yeah. movie, though, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Oh, ah, Jesus. Know. Man, this is it, man. That, that's, 
that's such a scary scenario man. yeah it's so oh. like i'm that. not a big i don't really like flying myself like i do it like and i'm not overly scared like but mm. i do as I, I always have these moments where my brain goes a wee bit Woo, yeah i'm fucking flying through the air right now <laughs> you know yeah it's fucking mental that's so fast yes but anyway I, I, just to, to address that as well like i mean the the, the bottle thing like like that, that could be utilized as a weapon like people should yeah. be aware of that like should... yeah i think they i think the bottles you buy in first class are made of different materials are they i think they're like a plastic are they plastic yeah i but, think but, so. but what about the bottle you buy in duty free they're glass that shouldn't be allowed in the no. plane i think yeah probably do you know what i mean although i suppose where do you draw the line because you can make it make loads of things into weapons you can there's bits you, know I mean? you could like tear the armrest off a seat ah. and use it as a weapon yeah like you, you know what i mean or even like there's all sorts of ways you can make weapons. We have to be careful. What if there's terrorists listening to this oh, no, who are getting yeah. ideas? Getting fucking ideas. <laughs> Mom, if we can use the armrests. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, eh? But yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's, that's how that. we defeat terrorism. Have we got anything else to talk about, Tom? No, I think we should uh, we should, we should ditch walk. this plane. Yeah, because... yeah, let's wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, this huh? I mean, this is good luck finding podcast highlights yeah. for this one. <laughs> I might have to it's go back to okay. last week. Yeah. I mean, we've just been... I think it's, it's, a, it's a symptom of we're a wee bit tired we've had it we've had a bit of a run there distinct lack of cans yeah the boys aren't on the cans yeah we're trying to be good and sensible men Mm -hmm. today um well my phone keeps going off which means someone wants to get on the cans with me but i think that next week next saturday Mm -hmm. we will go back on the uh, yeah we'll we'll assume form next saturday but anyway this is a this is just a filler to keep you going Mm -hmm. we'll be back fit and firing on all cylinders next saturday like share subscribe tell your mates fucking yeah i'm maybe going to move the release date to tuesdays oh yeah yeah okay takes the stress off a little bit does it later in the week yeah well man you've got to look after your stress levels it's very important in this life so yeah that's cool all right adios